Public Safety Committee to order. Um, and I will note that there is no quorum, so we won't be taking any official business today. With us today are Councillor Dave Murphy and myself, Councillor Maureen Carney. And um, we will dispense with any of the uh, official items, including minutes or anything else, but we will go ahead and uh, listen to a report from the building commissioner, Lou Hasbrook. So, um, you know, the end of the fiscal year, I put together a report of all the permits that have been issued during the past year. It's, uh, it's about 8% fewer permits than there was last year, but last year was an exceptional year. Um, and I don't think that that level of activity would have been sustainable in the department unless we had, had uh, gotten more staff. The uh, all in all, a pretty safe year. Three significant house fires, houses that are, uh, but all three houses are going to end up being replaced. Uh, one of them is the plans for one of them are, are in hand. Um, inquiries from the contractors on the other two. Um, I was happy to see that the city um, appointed uh, Dwayne Nichols and uh, Joey Casper. I feel like. Uh, those are two people that are uh, really well suited to the gym and made me happy. I've worked with both of them um, and I don't think we could have done better. Well, I don't know if we have any um, questions. Um, have you heard anything about Shaw's Motel yet from the new owner? I had a conversation with um, with him um, in the spring, and um, he asked questions. He didn't volunteer very much information, but he did talk about, did ask what could he do there. Um, and I explained to him some of the criteria that went with the um, permitting for more than seven for seven or more dwelling units. Um, and my sense of the conversation was that he might be anticipating reusing the yellow house, which uh, I've been through a number of times and is in good condition. Mm -hmm. Because I know the, the uh, demolition request that, that, that uh, caused the delay was just for the motel building, not for the other two dwellings. So, right. hopefully. And uh, I, I did talk about that and told him that the motel building had been um, reviewed. Uh, and I mentioned that uh, both other houses were actually, you know, I think the yellow house is not pre 1900. I think it might be 1912. Um, but Josephine's house is certainly pre, you know, 1900 or earlier, but might not be found um, historically significant because it's. Um, there's an awful lot of houses exactly like that sprinkled all through that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But they, they seem, both those other two buildings seem serviceable with some repair. You know, they need heating and electrical and so forth, but structurally they seem okay. The way that the, uh, the special permit, um, the design standards might make it difficult to reuse um, one of the two structures because the number of the units need to be pushed back. Um, but I, but it is a special permit, so there is quite a lot of latitude also. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they could reuse the the smaller house, then you know it's always better to re reuse something than mm -hmm. just to tear it down and build it new again. Yeah, that would seem to be. You could make that request to say hey, we want to keep the streetscape the same, so give us the leeway. Because that could very easily have been turned into an up and down two family, mm -hmm. and it would have been very serviceable, and it would would save the streetscape on that side. And I've never seen the garages. The bushes ate the garages so many years ago. You can't even tell they're in there. So. No, they're uh, they're uh, they're falling down along with everything else. They're secured, so no matter 
never became an issue, but the roofs are falling. Mm -hmm. um, how's the, how's the um, assisted living going in, up on the hill? What are they doing moving right along there? They're, yeah, they, uh, it's, I mean, it's had a few setbacks and there have been some discussions. Um, they went, they ended up in Boston for a waiver for some of the plumbing code issues, but, um, and the assisted living facility at uh, Linda Manor was put up a little more quickly, but this is um, going along fine. And uh, I'm not <laughs> How about single family housing starts? You know, it seems that nationally, you know, the resale market's picking up, but the new housing starts haven't been, you know, in, individuals contracting for for custom builds. That, I know the Village Hill, they're building right along as part of their, their um, new urban plan, but for people just doing single site custom homes, it still seems to be kind of slow. Um, I don't, well, we have Emerson Way, mm -hmm. and then there's also the Beaverbrook development, and there's a steady um, s uh, number of permits coming in for both of those places. And we've had, uh, I would have to guess, but probably four or five um, uh, infill development projects, um, and actually maybe more than that during the course of the last year. There's two, two came quite recently uh, very near uh, the Beaverbrook development on uh, Ch both on Chestnut Avenue, one, uh, and there was one on North Street, uh, Northern Avenue, sorry, and uh, of course the one down here on the corner of South Street, mm -hmm. uh, one on Hillcrest, which I think actually might have happened last year, although I think they just kept going this, in, this, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the fall. And the Hillcrest one just was an empty lot that conformed. Right, infill. Right. Yeah, it, of those. But some of them are taking advantage of the new zoning. Right. And what's the general talk been about their acceptability in neighborhoods? Because that was one of our big concerns was, you know, people are going to say, oh, you're, I'm surprised the one on Old South Street, how good it fits in there. Because you never would have imagined a house that size would have looked Normal there, but it seems to look like it's a reasonable fit. Well, I mean, there have been some dis there have been some discussions. Um, some of the, the design standards are pretty well laid out, and some of the proposals we've seen haven't met the design standards. And there's been a little bit back to the drawing board to reduce the frontage of the garage, the, the area of frontage taken up by a garage. The, uh, there's a parcel on Blackberry Lane that I, I believe could have been, there was some discussion about frontage. Um, it's not on a public street, but it could certainly be called a way. It probably would have had frontage for two lots. They, the, the purchaser opted to put a single house on there, and one of the abutters was very concerned about what was going to go on that lot. Is that the little dead end portion of it? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. that's um, the uh, the houses on uh, Laurel Street are not a hundred percent well received. Um, that in the sense that they're a little bit they're they're a little bigger than the houses on the other side of the street. Mm -hmm. It's just hard. I mean, the economics comes into it. Mm -hmm. It's really hard for contractors to build small houses economically. Mm -hmm. You know, the land costs are such that, you know, it's really hard to, to do new construction under $350,000 or it just doesn't work. The economics don't work. If you come to Laurel Park, there are a couple of houses in there that are, you know, being, that are coming in at well under, you know, and these are complete teardowns with the basic mm -hmm. idea, you know, yeah. starting all over again, mm -hmm. starting fresh. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we haven't seen this as small 
I had anticipated some smaller houses as a part of this infill. And the houses that we're seeing aren't large, but they aren't significantly smaller. Mm -hmm. um, well, it just seems, you know, the McMansions of the 90s, you know, people are building houses around 2,000, 2,200 square feet rather than breaking 3,000 because they want to be more energy efficient. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, do I really need that big room over the garage or do I really need, you know, that big L with a giant great room on it? There do seem to be scaling back for energy reasons and making them more sustainable. Yeah, I think that, uh, I think Emerson Way actually had some design standards as a part of the development and those houses are all, I believe, less than 2,500 square feet. I don't think that, and uh, some of the houses on uh, the Village Hill development uh, is sort of, in this, by necessity, they're smaller houses because they're tucked in on awfully small parcels. Mm -hmm. Although, the house per square foot they, didn't they, go down. They're, they've grown a little They're bit. small but expensive houses, but they're good if you get if you put really quality materials into them, it's easy to take something that they advertise with the price point in the threes and hit five with it, no trouble if you want nice finishes and uh, granite countertops. You know, I mean that's that's uh, that's a piece. The uh, uh, Clark School um, reuse project is going forward. The uh, Hubbard Hall is under construction and. Uh, the plans are pretty much finalized for Rogers Hall, and uh, I expect to see the permit. Have the, we've issued the permit for Hubbard Hall, and we expect to issue the permit for Rogers Hall uh, by September. There were some changes in the layout. The, um, the original plans uh, showed less extensive renovations than the current plans. Um, you know, the current plans are showing a little bit bigger units. Um, but there's another, you know, just in and of that itself, there's another 35 units. Um, yeah, those I mean, are like 50 and 7, one's 50 and one's 70,000. Those are huge structures, mm -hmm. just giant. Yeah. And some of them will have exceptional views. Right. Just gorgeous looking. Not like Sullivan Square. <laughs> some of them on Sullivan Square have nice views, but a few of them have not a great view. I can't believe that we're not going to see an increase in the population in North America because it's not like houses are sitting empty. You know, you don't drive around seeing thousands of for sale signs in front of empty houses. How can we add like 400 units over the course of like five years without seeing a corresponding bump in the population? Oh, you know, demographically. You know how many kids are in your high school graduating class? Sure. You know we have we have the same number of people and twice the cars. Mm -hmm. You know there's households of three people where there used to be five in the household. So it's true. You know I'd be, be interested to see if if these result in more more how maybe more households but smaller households is what we've seen to this point because yeah, we certainly have point six instead of two point three. <laughs> Well, that's all my questions. Okay. Well, um, and I don't really have any questions. I do have another one. Oh, one more thing. Uh, yes. Public safety. They're, they're actually going to do a cleanup of the, uh, the former Honda site. Oh. The, uh, the, the, the uh, environmental company has submitted a, a plan of action to the DEP, and it involves a complete site cleanup with no restrictions. Hmm on the use of the site afterwards. And I'm not 100% sure they're going to come out of it quite that clean, but it's not going to be, um, what do they call it, AUL, um, which, is a which, which is some restrictions. They may have to address some concerns if they choose to do construction beyond what they're proposing, but um, they're going to removal of not a whole lot of material and just capping over. And uh, you know, that's, uh, to me, that's one of the most exciting things. That, second to the Hillendale Mall renovations, I think that's, you know, that's right up there. No, I was excited. I was hopeful when the, the Leas wound up with the 
the Chrysler franchise and it may wind up over there, but then they did away with Kia or something and it'll probably end up there. Have they have they said anything about an end use or just that they're going to clean it up? I'm only seeing the uh, the DEP documents. And do you know at all what happened? I know they were battling with their environmental engineers over the cost of the I have no idea. No, 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 this is a whole that. new group of people. This is people that you know the reports Heaven. mention some of the other environmental companies, but. It's also a 560-page report. I got through about 30 pages. It seemed the the summary, and uh, but it does it is going forward. And like I said, it, the goal is is you know to not have it be a restricted site anymore. That would be great because that's a one last big five-acre chunk on King Street. That development there would be you know exciting for permit fees, exciting for tax revenue. Exciting for maybe some more destination people come to town. So. It's in the entryway business district, which is probably has more options in terms of uses than any of the others. It's it's sort of a bridge between the highway business part of town and a separate business that's closer in, and they've pulled elements of both pieces together. So he, he, the table of use is um, quite extensive. No, that would be exciting. A lot of why we did that was to provide some some zoning incentives to work with that location and try and get some density and some some nice commercial stuff in there. So that'd be great if that came to pass. Well, I apologize that we don't have the full quorum of counselors here to hear your report. Well, they can read the minutes. And I apologize for being late. I serve at your pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't have to be kept longer than you need to be, so I apologize for that. Thank you. All right. And um, we really can't take care of any other business without any quorum. Mm -hmm. So, did you, did you want to just be briefly touch on that letter? Um, sure. I mean, I think the letter speaks for itself. Um, okay. Sent it out to the Okay. Um, are you, are you Thanks, there? Luke. Yeah. See ya. It's just boilerplate language, yeah. the same yeah. at the mayor. Um, this is the letter that um, we talked about. Oh, for the mosquitoes. Yeah. I don't know. Adjourn the meeting. Uh, and I concur.